The king is dead. Long live the king. Tonight, just 15 weeks after Presley's untimely death in Memphis, Shakin Stevens was one in a lineup of three substitute Presleys who strutted and fretted their hour upon the stage of London's Astoria Theatre. Elvis, the 80,000 pound multimedia musical, is the most expensive and apt to cash in on the Elvis legend. I'm on record as having been an Elvis fan since 1956. I went into print saying in 57 that he was a genius and I was laughed out of court. So nobody can say I'm jumping in on a bandwagon. Well, it's a warm part of mine. Soon for the show. See you get ready now. Go get over, don't you? Step on my white suede shoe. You can do anything but lay off of my blue suede shoe. You can knock me down, step on my feet, send a mind all over the place. Do anything that you want to do. But, uh, uh, honey, lay off of my shoes and don't you step on my blue suede shoes. celebrating what he did and I think that what he did was something that's really worth having a, an Irish wake about look, look at it in that sense it's an Irish wake Once the word got round, young and some not so young hopefuls gathered to audition for the three Elvis parts. Presley the teenager, Presley in his twenties, and Presley nudging middle age. James Vallon even came from the National Theatre, seeking a break from classical drama and Shakespeare. I, I want to play Elvis because I've always, I was, I was my period, Elvis Presley, 1950s. And I love Elvis, I love rock and roll. And, um, I'm a good singer, a very good singer. And uh, I thought, well, I do acting, I'm a very good actor. I can play most parts, character parts. But if the breaks don't come in acting, then I go to singing, I do singing and impressions as well. The rose grows wild in the country. The tree grows tall as the sky. Is wild in the country and here in the wild, wild country and wild. The thing is, I always look like Elvis anyway. <laughs> when I was younger, I always looked like Elvis. I mean, kids used to say to me, God, you look like Elvis Presley, you know, this is in the 50s, you know. And then only recently, only a few years ago, people came and said, you look like P.J. Proby, you know, you know. And it was embarrassing, but I don't think want to look like Elvis or P.J. Proby. I want to be me. He didn't get the part. Stuart Blake auditioned too. He too was disappointed. Go cat, go, but don't you step on my blue suede shoes. You can do anything, but lay off of my blue suede shoes. Well, you can knock me down, step in my face, slander my name all over the place. Do anything you want to do, but uh -huh, lay off my shoes. And don't you step on my blue suede shoes. Hey, you can do anything, but lay off of my blue suede shoes. Finally, there were only three who matched the right kind of singing with the right kind of looks. And one of these, the oldest, was an aging pop star in his own right, P.J. Proby. Once a teenager friend of Presley's who, in Hollywood days, recorded demo tapes to help him learn his songs. Find your sweetheart in the arms of a friend. But is that when your heart aches begin? When I was offered this part by Jack, I actually first turned it down. Um, because they have something in America called riding the coffin wagon. 
And uh, I do not want anything to do with that. But when I sat down and a few people talked about it, I decided if somebody's going to play this part, somebody's going to do it anyway, whether it be me or Joe Bloggs or whatever. Uh, I'd rather it be shown in the light that it really was instead of an actor who is just imitating him like Freddie Starr or somebody like that, sending him up. So and aren't you uh, riding the coffin wagon a bit then? I still feel a bit like I'm riding the coffin wagon, but at least I'm portraying him as a person who really knew him. Nobody, nobody in this country ever really met him. Uh, and I'm portraying him like the person I knew, not the person I would be acting. startling casting of all was that of a total newcomer. 16-year-old Tim Whitnall has quit school and A-levels to play the teenage Presley. Tim himself was born in the year Elvis was making Blue Hawaii. When you come back, back in up in the middle eight, give it a little bit more on the first one night, you're kind of throwing it away. Just give it a bit more edge. Yeah, one night with you. Okay, take it away. Same place. Always live very quiet life. I ain't never done no wrong. And I think it, it doesn't matter how old you are. I, I always used to watch him on TV and for films and things, and I still think he was great, no matter how old he was. Um, he still, you, you could still look back on what he did in the past, and it still sounds good today. Here's what I now pray for. All things that we took at last will make my dreams come true. Finding three Elvises hadn't been easy. Getting them into shape wasn't either. Also, you're a bit thin here, so what we're yeah. trying to do is to fill this yeah, out. And get yeah, yeah. Put pulling some bone down. There. Where's the balance to be drawn between out-and-out -out impersonation and a similarity that allows scope for each singer's own style? No, I'm not aiming for impersonation at all because that can be very dry and clinical. I think what we want to do is create the excitement. I'm not asking them to shake their hips there. I want to say, in this particular number, the mood that Elvis would put across and the reaction he would get would be this, and you've got to find a way of doing this. And I'll batter through rehearsing again and again and again until I feel, feel thrilled. No, I'm not imitating. I'm uh, relying on memory of when we were sitting around the, the table. Anyway, you snow girl. She'd go out evenings and pick a mess of it, carry it home and cook it for supper. Just about all they had to eat, but they did all right. Down in Louisiana, where the alligators grow so mean, lived a girl that I swear to the world made the alligator look pink. Beside Annie, you got your granny. Everybody said it was a shame Cause her mama was a working on the chain gang A mean, vicious, straight razor toting woman Lord have mercy Boys sound a little bit like Elvis We all sound a little bit like each other Because main, mainly the accent And uh, it's called the Bible Belt So we're all brought up very strictly religious Mainly Baptists and that is holy rolling and tent meetings. And uh, that kind of more, more importance is placed on singing than is on preaching in the South. It may not be a deliberate and rigorous course in impersonation, but there's no denying Elvis the pelvis taught a whole generation how to move. Shakin Stevens takes his lessons from the choreographer. Oh. He goes by the name of... When you get to that bit, that's the bit where the girls have gone down and they're going bang up to you. So can you really hit out on that so we really draw the eye to you? Right, let's try again. Two, three, four. Up. Well, there's a manual, there's a place 
a rock and roll, well, he's a guitar man, oh, he's a great big soul, he lays down the beetle like a ton of gold. When I first started singing, which was in school, uh, there was like a bell used to go at 10 to 4, and I used to get up in front of the class and sing. I used to move as well. And uh, later I seen Presley films, and uh, he was doing most the same thing, but I mean, obviously I took a bit from him. And for this show, I've got to think Presley and act Presley for the length of the time I'm doing it. All this time, money, talent and effort into producing a plausible similarity of a dead hero. But who's it all for? The Elvis fans? Will they flock to see it when they can get a more direct experience of what their idol was really like from seeing any of his films? No, that's exactly what they can't do. Because Elvis was never completely Elvis on the movies. Unless you've seen Elvis live, you do not know what dynamite there was in the man. I'm, I've seen him where he, I'm, he was the most thrilling thing I've ever seen in the theater, except for, and possibly not even except for, Laurence Olivier's Hotspur. Uh, but uh, nobody can suggest Elvis's career uh, in his later life better than Proby. I mean, Proby is, is a marvelous singer and, uh, and after all did a lot of demos for Elvis. And when you hear uh, uh, Proby sing, sometimes you can't tell the difference. Proby sometimes can be like Elvis on a good night. I know that sounds heretical to say, but it is true. And I believe that Shaking Stevens will do it, and I certainly think that Tim Whitmore's got it. He's got that sort of innocence combined with sensuality that was something that, that, that Cliff had in the early days, and I can see that it can, that can all happen again. The fact that he's 16, I mean, he's already captured the public imagination. He's well on the way, I would think. But life without you, it's been too lonely, too long. I expect ever to see the likes of Elvis again. And I think it would be rather sick and like Madame Tussauds if we put up somebody on the stage who was identical but just failed even by a jot to give me that thrill. He leaves down the beetle like a torn of gold. He goes by the name of King Creole. You know he's gone, gone, gone. Don't act happy, Sean Paul. You know he's gone, gone, gone. And a heavy shaking King Creole. 